Welcome to the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. I am your host and teacher, Eddie Hyatt, and I'm so glad you joined me today as we continue our exciting series on five reasons we should be supportive of the modern state of Israel. And uh, in our, our former two, this is the third one, the former two, we looked at Jesus, we looked at Paul, and today we're going to look at Old Testament promises in which God promised the land where the, the modern state of Israel is located, where the, the modern state of Israel, where the, the, its citizens dwell. God promised this very land, and actually a much larger area than that, but God promised this very land to the people who are there today, to Abraham and his descendants. You know what? I feel like praying today. And you know, there is a, there is a passage in Psalm 122, verse 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love thee. Pray for the peace. Hebrew word shalom means the well-being, overall well-being. And, and as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, I'm going to pray for the, the peace and the shalom in your heart today as well. Lord, we thank you today. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Almighty God, you are called in Scripture the God of all peace. And so we thank you today for your peace, for your shalom, and we pray today for the shalom of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Israel. We pray for your peace upon the people of that land, and we pray for your protection around them today from the enemies that want to destroy them. And I pray the same for your people that are listening to this podcast. I pray for your peace and your protection around them today and for your blessings to be made real to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, in the Old Testament, and this this is around approximately uh, 1800 years BC before the time of Christ, God called an, an, an Iraqi. He was living in what would be modern day Iraq. And he called him out of that land that was his homeland. And he said, I want you to come to a place that I will show you. And he said, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, which we'll talk more about that later. But he said to him, and the land where he, uh, where he, he guided Abram, he later changed his name to Abraham, was, it was called the land of Canaan. But it's that area of the Middle East where Israel now dwells. It included Gaza. It included the West Bank. Uh, in fact, it, it included uh, land going all the way into into the Iraqi or to the uh, the Euphrates River, which runs through Iraq. So, uh, what God promised Abraham and his descendants was a large area, but He said that God said to Abram, "This is D Genesis twelve seven, when He arrived in that land, the present day land of Israel. God said to Abram, to your descendants, I will give this land to your descendants.' Very clear, and then in uh, later in Genesis 15, 18, 21, God repeats that promise. And, and at this time, it says that God made a covenant, a covenant, a binding agreement. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying, to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, uh, the, and then he talks about the ones who dwell there, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Kedomanites, the Hittites, Perizzites, the Rephaim, Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gergesites, and the Jebusites. This is Genesis 15, 18 through 21. It's worth reading again. On the same day, the Lord made a binding agreement, a covenant with Abram saying, to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt, which I would have to think was the Nile, to the great river, the river Euphrates, which runs through Iraq, which I believe runs, if I'm not mistaken, runs right through Baghdad, to the river Euphrates, to your descendants, I have given this land. And then in Genesis 17, verses 7 through 8, God repeated this promise to Abram concerning his descendants in the land. He said, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land 
in which you are a stranger all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now, God is making a covenant. A covenant is a binding agreement. And what does he say? I give to you and your descendants after you the land. Uh, the land there in the Middle East where Israel now dwells has been given to them by God, by covenant. Not only that land, but a much larger area. And those who are just trying to destroy the state of Israel, they're ultimately going to bring uh, destruction upon themselves. But in the meantime, so many people are suffering. That is why we pray for the shalom, for the peace of Jerusalem and all the Middle East. So I'm going to read that again. I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now, after, uh, Israel later went into to bondage in Egypt, and then God brought them out and brought them into the land uh, for possession, and he gave them the law, and he, he gave them warnings and promises. He said to them, and this is in the book of Deuteronomy, I think it's around maybe chapter 30, he said, I set before you uh, blessing and cursing. Blessing, if you obey me and walk in my ways and love me, but cursing, if you turn away from me and you go after gods and you go after idolatry. So, so I've set before you, uh, it's your choice, I've set before you blessing and cursing. Uh, and, and because Israel did turn away from God, he allowed their enemies to overrun them and they were carried away into idolatry. But then he gave them all kinds of promises that he would regather them out of all the nations where they had scattered. And so we, we will look at, at those promises tomorrow. But I will close by saying this. Uh, where I may not differ with some people, uh, is Israeli supporters, I do not believe that the natural land of Israel is God's ultimate goal and plan for his people. I believe that God's covenant for his for these natural descendants of Abraham, that land belongs to them. And that's why we should support them, because God gave them that land. But in the Revelation, John saw a heavenly Jerusalem. A, a magnificent city coming down from God out of heaven. And, uh, and, and according to his measurements, it was a 1,500-mile square cube. <laughs> measurements up, width, depth, length, depth, width. It was a cube, 1,500 miles in every direction. Now, I believe this is probably symbolic of the glory that God has for, for his people, both Jews and Gentiles in the future. And if someone asks me, do I believe in, um, what, what do they call it, replacement theology that the church has replaced Israel? My answer is no, I believe in reconciliation theology that God is reconciling through the promised Messiah, Jesus. God is reconciling both Jew and Gentile to himself through Jesus Christ. And yes, he's, he's giving, he's going to give because he promised it. He covenanted. He's giving uh, the natural descendants of Abraham, that land in the Middle East. And we have to be supportive of them, even if they haven't yet turned as a nation to their Messiah. But Paul talks about there in Romans. Uh, read that, that those passages there in Romans. Um, he, he, he makes an interesting statement. He says in Romans chapter 11, uh, verses 25 and 26, he says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn 
away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Now, when he says all Israel will be saved, he's not talking about that every single uh, Jew, Israeli citizen or Jewish person will be saved because we can only be saved through faith in Jesus Christ. That is God's way of salvation. That is why Jesus told them to preach the gospel to every creature beginning in Jerusalem and Judea and, and how Paul took the gospel uh, to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. There's only one way to be saved, but what he's saying here is that there will come a day when collect Israel collectively, as a nation, its, its leaders will recognize Jesus as the true Messiah. Boy, won't that be incredible? We, we can't imagine what kind of impact that is going to have. Hey, well, listen, I'm Eddie Hyatt. This is the Eddie Hyatt Podcast, and tomorrow we're going to continue this, this theme of five biblical reasons you, I, we should be supporting the modern state of Israel. Check out my website, eddiehype.com. If you have further questions you want to ask me, the best way to do that is by email. And you can find all of my contact information there on my website, eddiehype.com. And I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.